Well, it's June the 4th. It's a beautiful Sunday. I'll tell you that much. A beautiful Sunday night after the NBA Finals has just concluded their second game. Um, but we're here to talk about lacrosse. We're here to talk about that tonight. And what we're here to talk about first is the NLL Finals, the game three, the deciding game. And well, what happened? Josh Byrne came back. Matt Vink dominated. The Bandits dominated. Tahoka Nanako. You know, the whole crew for the Buffalo Bandits. First idol for Buffalo in 15 years. First idol for the Bandits, who have been over the hump in a couple years. They lost a couple championships. They lost, you know, you know they lost a couple of big-time games when, you know, they couldn't afford to lose those, and now they are back at the top of the mountain back right at the top where they said they were going to be at the beginning of the season. This was the revenge tour for the Buffalo Bandits, and they did it. And so Buffalo, again, dominant performance like this, like that that, that four points that Colorado scored, you know, that's like, like the lowest – I don't think that's the lowest in an NL game, but it's like the lowest in the finals, which is insane to me that the man could only muster up four points. It wasn't it wasn't the fall of Dylan Ward or anything. It's just that you know, you know, this Bandit's defense was just on another level tonight. The offense was also on another level when they were able to get just shots off. Just on the level, you know what I mean, Priolo, Byrne, Nanacoke, the Great Dane, I mean, just the whole crew, again, for Buffalo. Unstoppable. They said they were going to do it, and they did it. They won the NLL championship. And now we get to sit pretty until the NLL schedule is released in September. But there's also Toronto, they'll be playing... A few games in Hamilton in December, they have those dates finalized, but they will move to um, Mississauga, you know, the Paramount Fine Food Center until the renovations are done there. So they'll be in Ontario. They'll, they'll, they'll still be in Ontario, but they'll be, um, you know, it'll still be Toronto technically, you know, not Hamilton like it has been, but they'll move back. Hamilton for the 2025-2026 season. Really, Toronto should just stay in Toronto, you know. But if you're gonna if you're gonna call them the Toronto Rock, you know, just have them be in an arena in Toronto. But whatever, man. Whatever it is what it is. And the PLL opened up in Albany this weekend. I'm gonna keep begging for more ABC games. We need those. It got a lot of softball people pissed off. On Twitter, and I was there, so I was there to roast all of them. So, yeah, so if you saw a bunch of softball tweets and you see the quote tweets, those were me. So, I'm trying, I'm trying to grow the game here. You know, it got it, it, it got people tuning in. You know, it may have been angry tuning in, but that's the type of stuff you need right there. Um, the shot clock, the 32 second shot clock, weird. It ended up not being too weird with the pace of play still being pretty good. I mean, most of the games, you know, were, you know, were at a decent two hours, you know, like they're supposed to be. I mean, there have been, there are some guys that just were on another level today uh, and yesterday. Mike Sisselberger for the Archers debuted. Nick Rowlett for Chaos, both amazing on the faceoff. Ryder Garnsey, one man wrecking crew, had what six goals for the Redwoods against Atlas. Cross Ferreira, D3, D3 guy, beasting out there for, for, for whatever reason, you know, for whatever reason, it was a crazy, crazy day for the Chrome. 
and everything. And every and every, every one of these games is very, very interesting. Again, a lot of teams have new faces. A lot of teams have new looks. A lot of teams have a lot of new things and a lot of new pieces to them. When you look at the scores, I mean, you look, Redwoods beat Atlas 13-12 in the opener on ABC, which, again, crazy. I mean, you got between the leg goals. You got you – got, Goals with one hand, you know, one hand behind the back, and stuff like that. You got dunk attempts. I mean, if you ain't watching, if you ain't watching lacrosse, I don't know what's wrong with you. I mean, my goodness. You know, archers new look again. The archers are a dangerous team every year, but beating the cannons like that, you know, the way they were playing, you know, chaos water dogs rematch again. Blaze Reardon. It was going to be tough to get goals on him, you know. And then Whip Snakes again, surprising loss to the Chrome. But hey, that's what you needed when you have Cross Ferreira, a dominant type of player like that. I mean, you know, you have your short stick, long stick matchups. You have you have your you have your big guys against your little guys. You have all different facets of what to do and what to make. And I don't, I don't think there were a lot of two point makes today either. That's another thing. And yesterday too. I don't think there were a lot of two point makes at all. So we're gonna we're gonna keep monitoring as the season progresses with the PLL. You know, when I come back to you all again to talk some lacks, it'll be time for the World Lacrosse Championships out in San Diego. So by that time, we're gonna be ready for the what thirty countries that will be competing for a world championship. At Snapdragon, at the uh, there's like three fields, but really it's it's like Snapdragon Stadium out in San Diego, the the home of the Aztecs. So when we come back, we'll talk PLL. We'll talk the first the next couple weeks in the PLL as the PLL heads on, you know, continues to go on tour, and then they'll make a stop. And, you know, we'll wait up on the PLL. We'll talk about the World Lacrosse Tourney and everything like that. We'll keep talking about it, you know, once or twice and everything like that. And, you know, we'll talk before and we'll talk after the tournament. And then we'll get back into the PLL. That's just how it is. So, you know, again, opening weekend was impressive as usual. I wonder what those ratings are going to look like because, I mean, again, you got the softball fans all mad and stuff like that. And, I mean, it, it's the good stuff. That's the stuff you want to see, you know, as we, as PLL essentially replaces what the MLS, you know, was for ESPN trying to put more sports back on the ABC. Because that's really should be the goal is putting more sports back on ABC Live. Not, I, I don't want to get into too much of a tangent about that, but I think y'all know my stance on that for a while now. But in any case, did you all enjoy all this lacrosse this weekend? Because I know I did. Um, so about the ESPN Plus thing, there was supposed to be a link that the PLL was going to give, but they didn't they didn't send it out to me to get that free ESPN plus per month. Didn't send it out. Kinda kinda angry about that. But it's fine. I can just watch highlights. So I'm cool. I'm cool. I can still watch 16 of the 48 games. So I'm fine. It is what it is. But yeah. I'm gonna go on and get myself ready for tomorrow as we continue to discuss indoor football and arena football and and, and you know who who we're going to discuss. Oh my goodness. Even during the bye week. Even during the bye week. Take care everybody. Have a good night. And to all that live in Buffalo, y'all deserve it. Y'all deserve that championship.